we can't kick the can down the road any longer. Yes, we can. We can't kick the can down the road any longer. Yes, we can. We can't kick the can down the road any longer. Yes, we can. Reactor number one blew its top, the top uh, couple of floors by the looks of it. It's still standing. It was a serious detonation and 100% meltdown, Unit 1 at Fukushima. And it's been recorded at a million sievers at its doors, it just outside its doors, outdoors. Unit 2 had a detonation, but it's standing, it's still intact. Uh, but it's melted cores, you can't get in there, you can't do anything with it, you can't find the cores. It's 100% meltdown in unit number two, like unit number one. Unit number three blew all of its floors off, just as ground floors is left. It was a 10-story building, and it was max fuel. It's considered two million times worse than any other reactor on the planet. Unit four, another reactor at the plant, had uh, went into a heart attack mode and blew every panel out of the building. It destroyed the upper part of the building completely, the upper floors of the building. That was also, they're all 10 story buildings there. And the fuel pools had melted, uh, went dry and melted several times. The detonation, by the way, at unit number three, according to studies, have have claimed that it's probably a nuclear detonation at number three and we got a lot of information on that and that uh, seems to be the, the standard for unit three but unit three once again is two million times worse than any other reactor on the planet unit three unit five had serious damage from the tsunami that came through its buildings were picked up and had their basement broke and it's flooded with extraordinarily radioactive material, they pumped that material onto Unit 3. So you're pumping extraordinarily high radioactive materials onto Unit 3 melted core, and that also went up into the environment. All of these release and are still releasing into the environment, not only into the ocean, but into the atmosphere. Unit 6, um, Unit 6, was structurally damaged. It's beyond both five and six are beyond repair, but they're intact that we know about. But there's an internet blackout in Japan, so we don't really know. But it seems to be, in my opinion, unit six and five had massive damage from the tsunami. It's inoperable. Uh, the, everything about it was destroyed inside of it. Each reactor has around 3,450 fuel assemblies. Each fuel assembly consists of around 12 foot rods and about 80 of them. That's the rule of thumb for that. And so it's like 300,000 rods in the reactors. And so three of these reactors melted down. The spent fuel pools, which were above each of these reactors, because, and the spent fuel pools uh, had around 1,535 bundles in each of them with 80 rods in a bundle. Each rod is plutonium uranium combinations, pellets, and are 12 feet long. And half a rod is enough to kill all the mammals on the planet after it kills all the humans. And a lot of these pools are also missing. A gram of this stuff can produce more radioactive atoms then all the grains of sands and all the beaches on earth a single gram when it's atomized and aerosoled and hundreds of tons of it was all nuclear power plants are for creating directed energy weapons uh, fuel which is isotopes exotic isotopes that's why they ended up with the max fuel and no matter what kind of fuel you want you're not going to make more energy Remember, you got to burn through a million gallons a minute of water, and you boil that water, and you kill all the life in the water, and all the reactors on the planet have went through 50% of the water on our planet and destroyed all the microorganisms and creatures and animals in that water. That's a stunning revelation. 
we have a continuous discharge into the environment uh, for over 1100 days it's think of St. Paddy's Day where they go out for 15 minutes and distribute dye and they turn this entire river because you know how dye spreads well think about the dye is radiation and think about St. Paddy's Day 1440 minutes a day for over 1100 days it doesn't get a chance right to dilute because it's continuously coming out so if you pour dye into a river every day non-stop what would happen for after three years if you got in a plane and went down river how far would you think you have to go after three years of pouring dye in the river every day 1400 you gotta look at this reasonably you gotta look at this logically and you have to look at it factually before you can do anything you have to know at least that much about it and that the melted reactors you can never recover them there is no technology on the planet that can contain just radioactive used spent fuel the fuel pools that they store these things in to use assemblies for 30 or 40 years before they try to put them somewhere else those pools boil off all the time they're releasing radioactive material into your community and so the fable is endless they give the name of radioactive materials that are insignificant the same names as the stuff that are significant and that's how they lie to you manipulate you and deceive you and that's the deception that's the deception that is used to destroy everything <laughs> Well, I don't know why that's funny. It's, I don't find it funny at all. <laughs> I had secure phones. I had other uh, equipment that kept me in touch with the uh, State Department at all times. I don't remember. I don't know. I, I'm sure that the... <laughs> well, I don't know why that's funny. It's, I don't find it funny at all. <laughs> we can't kick the can down the road any longer. Yes, we can.